This is the solution, Evans, Chapter 5, Problem 6, and we're going to use Problem 3, so I pulled it over. I recreated the data in there and also set us up here because we have five parts to 6. To question or Problem 6, we have five, or five parts to it here, and drew ourselves a little bit of a diagram here that will help understand how these probabilities work. So, referring to the coin scenario described in Problem 3, let A be the event that you have exactly two heads find the probability of A. We have to find all the instances when there's exactly two heads. And if we come through here and we start counting, that does not fit it, but this one does. There's two heads there, exactly two we're looking for. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there. There's three, okay? So we have three instances times probability is even for all of these, so we have a 37 and a half percent chance of taking two heads, exactly two heads, okay? Part B says, what's the probability of at most one head? That's all the instances where there's zero or one head, okay? So that doesn't work. Two heads in there, two heads in there, but we do have one here, zero here, one here, and one here, so that's four instances. It's four times probability. 50% chance that you're going to have zero or one head, at least, but no more than that. Just zero or one, no more, not two or three, okay? That's how the question reads. So C is the event that at least, there are at least two heads. So that means we have two or three heads. So, well, there we have three, one, three there. There's the second one. Here's a third one. And there's a fourth one here, okay? So again, we had 50% chance of having at least two heads. That's two or three. But that one, not zero. Okay, so part D says, are the events A and B mutually exclusive? Find the probability of A or B. So what we're going to find out is A was exactly two heads versus the situation when you have zero or one. Those are exclusive. They do not overlie each other. And so this is the probability of A, represented by a circle, and this is probably by B, uh, by an ellipse here. Okay. And the total is represented by the box. This is how I did it in class. I showed the total probability is one, or 100%. And you have a probability of A and a probability of B. And when they're exclusive, they're not overlying each other. They don't contain any of the same elements, okay? So they're separate. So the answer is, yes, they are mutually exclusive. And what is the probability that you're going to get an A or a B? And that's the instance where you add, okay? So the probability of A plus the probability of B, that's just simply going to be that plus this. And you have... 0.875% or 87.5% chance of it happening, 0.875 probability that you have an A or B. That's a pretty high probability. Okay. So now, when we look at E, are the events A and C mutually exclusive? Find the probability of A or C happening. Okay. So when we use uh, this mutual exclusive test on this, I'll change this to C so it's accurate, makes sense. Okay. So that's C. That's the probability of C. Okay, um, A says you have exactly two heads, and C says you have at least two heads. Okay, so it's, the probability of C is going to be larger. We already saw that, because it's whether you have two or three versus if you have exactly two heads. But they're overlying each other because C does contain some part of A. Okay, as a matter of fact, if you really look at it, C contains all of A. Okay. So the way that you uh, answer this one is that no, it's not mutually exclusive. And the equation for when you have non-mutual exclusive is the sum minus the probability of A. So it's going to be equal to C plus A, but minus A because it contains it. And you're going to end up with a 50% chance of uh, A or B happening, okay? That's the solution for problem six.